Thank you for joining us for the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Tuesday, July 25th. I am Marie Claire Williams. Our top story, Parliament will this afternoon debate the current impasse between government, the trade unions and the private sector. House Speaker Michael Carrington made the announcement this morning immediately after opposition MP Kerry Simmons tabled a resolution calling on government to avert industrial action by resuming dialogue with the unions and the business community without delay. Carrington said even though the standing orders provide for debate on the resolution to take place from 6 p.m. today, it will be done immediately after lunch. The resolution calls on Prime Minister Frendel Stewart to immediately convene a meeting with the two sections of the social partnership. On Sunday, Stewart told a luncheon of the ruling Democratic Labour Party that he would not be pressured into reducing the controversial national social responsibility levy. This is one of the key demands of the unions and the private sector. He also said he would not step in to avert further industrial action, and Stewart denied that he had not met with the social partners leading up to yesterday's march, and that he had resisted demands for salary increases for public workers. In other news, the Director of Economics at the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Justin Ram, is questioning whether Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean are on their way to achieving the development goal of becoming a just society and globally competitive. Addressing the annual review of the Central Bank of Barbados this morning, Dr. Ram says the countries need a new way of work and transformational leadership. He explained there is need for more focus on implementation rather than planning. Ram's comments come amid repeated calls from the private sector and trade unions for greater dialogue with government on the way forward for the ailing economy. And in order to have proper implementation, it's really important that we include those stakeholders that are important in order for us to implement properly. The frontline practice for and with citizens. So for example, if you are trying to implement an improvement in educational outcomes, it's very important that you include the frontline practitioners, the teachers. So implementation means significant dialogue at all times and communication with all of the necessary stakeholders. And the opposition Barbados Labour Party is dismissing accusations from government ministers that they were behind yesterday's march against austerity measures. The BLP joined the march, which was organized by the four main trade unions and the private sector, to press for further talks with government on their concerns over the austerity measures, particularly the increased national social responsibility levy. Party leader Mia Motley also brushed aside suggestions that the opposition is anxious to form the next government. A party that is going to be 80 years old next year, that is the oldest political party in the English-speaking Caribbean, that does not hide and peep and do anything, does not have to hide behind the private sector or the union movement in Barbados. And for the record, this parliament expires on the 6th of March next year. That is about seven months away. We are not in a hurry to do anything. The Prime Minister, however, should be in a hurry to relieve the pressure and the suffering on Barbadians who are saying, not us, that they can't take it anymore. And if he thought that that was not the message that Barbadians wanted him to have, I trust and pray that at 4 o'clock this afternoon he has a different perspective from 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. We see it as a strong message and we equally see it as a mandate that Barbadians want fairness, that they are prepared to do what they have to do for this country, but they cannot carry loads that they're physically incapable of carrying. Mm -hmm. And the NSRL at 10% is one of those loads. Five men are due in court today, charged in connection with the murder of 58-year-old Colleen Payne last week. Three teenagers have been arrested and charged. 17-year-old Baggio McNeil Boxill of 3rd Avenue, Spring Garden, Black Rock, 18-year-old Kishon Thomas of Nichols Road, Seaview, St. James, and 19-year-old Orlando Ricardo Martin of 2nd Avenue, Babies Lane, St. Michael. Two other men, 24-year-old Kyle Gill of Danesbury, Black Rock, and Darian Thompson, age 19, of Old Plough Road, Bagatelle, St. Thomas, are also charged with assisting the teens. Payne was shot last Monday while at the Royal Bank of Canada's ATM on University Drive, Black Rock. She was taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by ambulance, but she succumbed to her injuries. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
morning, Miss Oya. <laughs> morning. <laughs> you again. So you're washing cars now. Well, I can't keep up with you at all. Yes, girl, you know they've got provision to sell it slow. Mm. And I don't sell nation newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I'm washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It clean. But, but you're going in very early though? Yeah, I'm just going early so I can read the bar better sit there online before work starts. Right. But you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I, I got a special boo here that I got it uh -huh. shiny. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh. You too. All right. What that paper is? She can't see clearly when the dirt is gone. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Law enforcement officers in Guyana are continuing the search for 13 escaped prisoners. The inmates escaped from the Lusignan jail yesterday, and they are the latest to flee following the fire at the Camp Street prison in Georgetown earlier this month. We get more from HGP Nightly News in Georgetown. Heavily armed police and soldiers have been deployed around the Lower East Coast Demerara following news of the escape. Deputy Police Commissioner David Ramnerein spoke of the police's posture to recapture the now 17 inmates, 13 from Luziknan and the remaining four from Camp Street. And then we have an arrangement in place which will respond to all these bits of information across the country that we receive, which will also be um, inclusive of the utilization of the SWAT unit, uh, information which you're going to process into intelligence. We already have some bits of information. Unfortunately, none of those bits of information have proved to be helpful, but we respond to each one of them. Prison Director Gladwin Samuel speculated that the fugitives might have escaped during the heavy downpour Monday morning. He said it was during the headcount that prison officers noticed that 13 had been absent. And finally, at least eight people were killed when a four-story building collapsed in Mumbai earlier today. Fire and police officials said more than 20 people are feared trapped in the rubble. The chief fire officer of the Mumbai Fire Brigade says so far 16 people have been rescued and two firemen were injured during the rescue operation. The ground floor of the building housed a nursing home which was vacant at the time. The rest of the building was occupied by three or four families on each floor. In 2013, 145 people were killed in three separate building collapses around Mumbai. And that's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune into Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.